right. All right. Episode one of the Kickback Podcast. I am your boy, Steezus Christ. To my right, please tell the people who you are. What's up, guys? John Colombo, video director and, uh, you know, cultural connoisseur and consumer of all things. <laughs> all right, you too young. <laughs> you know, a little you know. Too much. Now, let's consumer listen. of things. <laughs> and I like turtles. I like turtles. <laughs> to my far left, we're going to say the best for last. I'm Danny, ed- uh, editor at Sneaker Inc. That's it? You're not well, a... That's it. Dude, you yeah. Like, you don't I like gold gold One of the officiants of the sneakers sneaker. around here. I'm, I didn't get the memo about the gold chains. I didn't either, apparently. apparently we left, yeah. we left. It's standard. No, I got you. Standard. I know. I know, Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> over here. And to my immediate left, our special guest for our very first podcast. Uh, I go way back with this gentleman just from... Uh, my days of living in the Midwest and wanting the cop shoes that I didn't have access to. And this guy held me down every single time that I reached out. He goes by the name of Shoe Wolf. Hello. Woo! Live and in the building. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I actually want to know, because I've never even asked you this, how'd you even get the name Shoe Wolf? Oh, that's a pretty interesting story. Well, let's hear lay it. On. <laughs> lay, <laughs> lay it on thick. It's not even, it's not even like anything crazy. It's kind of corny. But um, I was hanging out at the house one day and I saw a special on Fox 11 News about the uh, Kogi truck. Mm. And it said, if you want to f- find out what the Kogi truck is, follow it on Twitter. I didn't have a Twitter. So this is, we're going back. Yeah, yeah, even yeah. Before the gram was popping, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Twitter wasn't even popping, barely. Like, Nice Kicks had like 14,000 followers. <laughs> That's way back. Early days, Early yeah. Early days. Um, so to get on uh, Twitter, you had to you know make a screen name. So I was like popping all the shit in, and nothing was taken, 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 and none of it was shoe wolf or wolf or anything to do with shoes. Um, sitting there getting high at the same time, I'm watching uh, Teen Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. For it. Okay. Wait okay. for it. Wait for it. Uh, Teen Wolf. And in the process, it, it was a, it was a Michael J. Fox marathon. Some time lapsed as I'm uh, signing on to this uh, Twitter account. I don't know how an hour fucking passed by, but now I turn around, then Back to the Future's on. So, both, uh, both, both things overlapped, and uh, the sneakers were part of both movies. Um, you know, the Nikes and, uh, and whatnot. So, uh, I was trying, like, I, I, you know, I thought of shoes. I love sneakers at the time. I always have. I had a bunch already. So I typed in, uh, you know, shoe something, and that was taken. And wolf, that's taken from the Teen Wolf. And then I typed in shoe wolf, and it wasn't taken. So that was the first thing that I punched in that <laughs> <laughs> wasn't taken. And, uh, yes. and that's how we came up with, uh, with shoe wolf. And immediately, I found the uh, Kogi truck. <laughs> <laughs> Which, Mission which, accomplished. Yeah. Which was the whole point. Um, and it was weird. Maybe about an hour and a half in, uh, Back to the Future 1 is over. Back to the Future 2 comes on. <laughs> I, have, uh, I have three followers. Oh, shit. It's uh, Clark Kent. Oh, shit. Nice Kicks. And some fucking kid out in Boston. I forget the kid's name now. Good kid. <laughs> <laughs> the sneaker kid. Yo, that's wild. Because I was actually, that, I mean, that leads right into my second question with uh, Twitter. Because that's how we connected originally. Because Twitter was popping, like, before Instagram and before Snapchat and all that shit. Like, everybody was on Twitter. And that's how I got a lot of my information just from being in the Midwest and, like, reaching out to the coast and stuff like that. And I wanted to know, was Twitter, like, I mean, obviously you just answered that, but was Twitter a big part in your come up as far as, like, what eventually turned into? Well, that that introduced me to the whole idea of reselling sneakers, right. which was primarily what I was known for in the beginning mm-hmm. was getting my hands on rare sneakers or being able to uh, hook somebody up with a sneaker that they couldn't get yep. and whatnot. And then I started flipping kicks, you know, and the, oh, I know. there wasn't a, there wasn't, <laughs> there wasn't a whole stick, the whole stigma on resellers back right, then. Yeah. You know, we were kind of gods back then. Exactly. Yeah. Most and definitely. Now, and now we're assholes. To an extent, I mean, yeah, yeah. Like the kids, everybody complains about the reseller, but everybody goes to them. Exactly, exactly. Bottom line, you're going to end up talking to the reseller about uh, that sneaker you need. 
yeah. or, or, or the sneaker you need gone today. I need it gone today. Right. The kids line up for sneakers for four or five days, and then the day they, they need it gone today. Yep. They, they need it they gone just, today. Yeah, they just yeah. The rent on it. Um, yep. So, what was it? Not to cut you off. What was it that got you into reselling? Though was it like a hustle that you needed to like come up on some bread quickly, or was it just something that naturally came? It's something from that your naturally naturally came. Just uh, I picked up from the interaction that I had with people from around the states mm -hmm. that the fact that I was in LA, right, and they weren't, yep. and I had access to uh, the undefeateds. Yep. You know and whatnot, and that a lot of shit was coming back at undefeated back then. You know what I right. mean? Supreme undefeated and whatnot so um, I, I I saw the uh, the activity and people's interest and in, and in coming at me about like yo can you get me this you're out mm -hmm. there yeah you know so I've uh, I've always been a hustler yeah, um, I believe for it. many reasons uh, so I just took all that into put that into the sneaker business right you know and, and it was just something you already had access to based on your connects and yeah and kind of this kind of got a rule uh, you know you make make some money and put your money right back into it Absolutely. like uh, uh, that particular thing right so i started making a decent amount of money on sneakers so i kept putting the profit back into buying more right right what i would call capital yeah which i have a wall of sneakers in my apartment and people ask me like you you don't have time to wear all these sneakers you work six seven days a week you you, mm -hmm. you know you never get dressed because you're always in your <laughs> fucking nmds from work right and your fucking floral shorts and you know, so people think that, <laughs> what? Yeah, shout had, out, I got the same LRG shorts. I already know, Flair. <laughs> I've had them for two years, man. That's my good luck short. Hell um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, people think I don't have time to wear these sneakers. To me, all these sneakers also become, like, just this monetary investment. Mm -hmm. I have, I look at the wall and I say I have a lot of money. Most definitely. You know? I know firsthand I had to flip some myself, and it got to a point where it was like, okay, I got all these shoes, and I, I'm in a, a situation right now where... I need to get some bread and I looked at that and I always said from the time I started collecting and like if something ever happens in my life this is an investment and I know I can flip these for double or triple the price one because of my size and two because I most of them were dead stock so I completely understand that mentality of you know having that situation so uh, you also had shoes that were dead stock for years for years yeah and there was no we had an intention of wearing them at one point at one point in time they, they were going to be on my stock, feet right and they're just sitting there it's just money in the bank yep straight mm -hmm. up that's dope though. So like, I know, I, I don't even remember how I came across you because at that time it was like, what was it, Corgi shoes popping off, Croatian style, Fran Elations, like the whole like West Coast. I mean, y'all were just like a conglomerate pretty much of just like. Yeah, there's, there was just a few players that, that yeah. people were aware of, you know. Um, it was it was cool to be part of like the boom of the recognition exactly. of, of some people that are out on the West Coast because in my eyes, even before I connected with all those people out here, mm -hmm. I thought, you know, New York's where it's at. Right. You know, I, I would fly to New York uh, for business or whatnot, and uh, people, everybody's walking around with sneakers. Right. Every, every single girl, guy, yeah. everybody's got a pair of kicks on, like yep. not, you know, or, or the Tims or whatever, but somebody, that you, their focal point of the outfit was always Exactly, sneakers. started from the ground up. You know, yeah. I came out my first subway and I looked around, I said, everybody. Yep. Everybody's rocking <coughs> sneakers, so I kind of felt like you know they had it more, they were more fashion forward as right. far as the sneakers went. But uh, it was cool to find out there was you know there was a lot of history here. Exactly. You know, connecting with Corgi Shoe early uh, in person, one of the first people that ever met that guy in person, and I would continuously see him, just randomly. Right. You know, I would pull up to his house and and buy sneakers in the alley and throw the ball with his fucking dogs and man the game done changed you know, like you can't say so, that no more no hell no 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 no. Damn, no, it's not, no it's not fun anymore it's fun but it's not it's not what it used to be jack what's up can we get a little volume turned down on the tv sir i'm trying to have a conversation for <laughs> <Flair>. <laughs> it got louder out of nowhere yeah right no that's dope um i also wanted to know because like I know for a minute business was booming. Did business, you have like there was a point <laughs> minions that you had placed at different like campouts and lineups? Cause break it down a little bit. Cause yeah, oh, there was a. I mean, not not to give. I mean, the game ain't the same no more. So you're not really giving away tricks of the trade. No, no, no. But, there, there was no tricks of the trade. It's uh, I've never really like spoken on this publicly. It was just a, it's just known amongst heads that have been out here forever, mm -hmm. hustling. You know, I was in their way. 
yeah uh, for years yeah um there was no getting past <laughs> my, get my, past the wolf pack <laughs> yeah if, when i was out there in person you know 20 spots mm -hmm. up in the front to, yeah minions i wouldn't call them minions just cats who needed something right that i could provide them and they could provide, Absolutely. provide me their time and their body for that chair mm -hmm. and i might have had something they needed there was going to be an exchange yeah of services and then, you for know sure. loyal motherfuckers so right you know, I, I would take my son, my son, mm -hmm. you know, he would, he would come out with my cousin and everybody. That's how it started out. And, you know, and then dope, I got a little, because I had that following, cats would be like, yo, Wolf, you know, whatever you need, dog. Right, and be like, right. Well, as a matter of fact, what are you and your homies <laughs> Not doing? as you mentioned, Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew a few so bodies would, on Saturday. Yeah, so we would be at, uh, back in the day when it was popping, we used to get like releases at the Montalban. Yep. The Montalban Theater was big. Mm -hmm. So you have the Montalban undefeated, you know, and a House of Hoops was popping big yeah. at the Beverly Center. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's three of main release spots, tier zero and then the tier one account, mm -hmm. and then the House of Hoops exclusives. So you had to right. be three different places at the at same time. At one time, time yeah. And I would, man, uh, the Black Easy Air, Air Easy One release uh -huh. had 28 pairs that day. That's crazy. At the house. What the fuck? <laughs> just <cheering. laughs> and, uh, and, and the only reason I came home with 28 pairs is because I think I sold four like on the way home for nothing, <laughs> by the way. You just know? looking out for people. Yeah, it was, up to, it was up to a couple years ago I was living off of Easy Money. <laughs> like, no I shit. I say that shit. Like, yeah, because you know I had the Easy One samples. Right. Um, had the uh, the bone gray, which is the which ended up being the uh, Zen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, Croatian style owns it now. He bought it off me for an undisclosed amount of money, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now that shit is worth an undisclosed amount of three times or four times what I sold it to him for. I don't shit. feel bad. Um, I bought all three pairs yeah, for eleven thousand dollars, mm -hmm. and I sold one for more than what you bought. 12. All three. Yeah. Yeah. You I know, believe it. And then I rocked the shit out of the other one to all the Watch the Throne concerts. Uh -huh. Kanye walked right by me <laughs> and he was like, yo, like, what the fuck? Because yeah, he was the only one with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think, like, I don't know. I don't want to talk about how they got out from his closet to some, to your to foot. some guy's <laughs> trunk, to some kid in Florida, to some debt with this other guy. So, like, yo, do you need these? And they fucking show up at my fucking uh, place in downtown LA. I was doing the penthouse with my ex and fucking, I got this big square box and it's just three pairs of shoes. No rap, no nothing. Just bouncing around. <laughs> and it's the three fucking sample <laughs> pairs of, of easy ones. You open the box like, you know, Yo, like shit started fiction glowing. shit. Oh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they were still glowing. Still yeah. glowing. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? So it was pretty cool yeah. uh, when I ended up with those shoes. But yeah, I mean, back in the days, yeah, we used to lock it down. Right. We had yeah, a lot I, of cats I know, out there. man. It was a, it was a hustle. It turned into right. a business quickly. Absolutely. Um, and then there was a point to where I got past that, and I just started going to stores, mm -hmm. and asking them if I could buy, you know, a percentage of the shipment. No shit. Straight up, you know. And were, were they receptive to that? Could not you many. No. Okay. Not many stores were receptive to that because there's already, people that are the, that we all know are the king of that the out gatekeepers, here. Gatekeepers, yeah. And they're. They're the only ones that are, you know, mm -hmm. grandfathered into that shit somehow, right. and you got to respect that. Yep. And you don't talk, you know, you don't talk about what stores or who it is or what, you know. Right. It's an unspoken like. Yeah. It's, it's but there, I did you find a couple it. stores, a couple mom and pop shops that, that understood, you know, right. sell, selling, you know, 50, 60 percent of their shipment, you know, for a mm -hmm. hundred dollars over for exactly. retail the day they get it so they can pay that Nike bill. Right, right. You know, because the mom yep. and pop shops are always struggling to pay their Nike bill. To just bill. pay it back, yeah. You know, I'm, out, I'm out in fucking Whittier, La Puente, like mm -hmm. weird spots in the cut. Right. Looking for mom and pop shops like, yo, I know you guys are getting these, let's talk. See, that's like, the hustle shit though. You exactly, know? yeah, because that's. That. And I found a couple of skate shops when SBs were popping. Right. You know, when all that shit was popping, I, I found a couple of skate shops that were selling me like fucking 100 pair, 150 pair. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it was crazy. They're like, pull up. Pull up, like we got you. Stacks of shoes behind the pl I was like, oh, is this fucking cool? Like, and yeah, the, yeah and this is before, <laughs> like, <laughs> this is before flexing on the ground where people want to stand in front of those boxes. Like, you don't, at that time, it wasn't, it wasn't a thing to, to stunt. Like, you was really out here in the field, like, doing this, 
yeah, building we these relationships. Yeah, and, I would take you would I would take some stunty ass pictures of a. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that twit pick shit to start yep, popping on up? on Twitter, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so twit pick got yep. added, so we started, <laughs> twit twit pick. we started getting a little stunty, yep. but it wasn't, I would never take no, like, uh, like Benjamin oh. Kicks, shout out Benjamin Kicks, that kid's a fucking, he's a beast, monster, yeah, you know, a lot, a lot of people don't like that kid, but I love that kid, he's a fucking hustler, mm -hmm. you know, shout out to fucking Boomin, the Boomin way, that kid's fucking getting it, Most definitely. but I never took pictures like that kid, like, on the phone with like 80 pairs of Yeezys, you know, under me like a rug. <laughs> you know, shout out to that shot, Benjamin, if you ever hear this. That was a, an amazing picture. <laughs> I reposted that shit. It was ill. It was, I think it was in the bathroom. Fucking yeah, ill. She was but anyway, <laughs> like, like I've never taken the, those type of shots, you know, back then. Mm -hmm. Did I ever when Instagram came up? Sure. Well, of course. I've taken some yeah. stunning ass pictures that to delete. You know, people go, right. like, oh, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> or, or, or the store that, that you got those from, be like, yo, you can't post that. Yeah, because they don't want to get caught in, yeah. in the whole situation, you too. You can't post 18 pairs of mm. exactly the fucking sizes that I'm missing with the fronts facing the picture. <laughs> What you, you gave me, playing? you gave me a pair of something to shoot yeah, yeah. and told me I couldn't shoot the front of the box and don't get none of this and none of that. Yeah, yeah, with their tag on it. Like, oh, uh, shit. Showing the, yeah, showing the retail yeah. sticker on from Nay store and shit like Man, that. My bad. <laughs> my wow, bad. man, that's, yo, that's insane. So as time progressed and you became more of a fixture within the sneaker community out here, uh, and after building those relationships with people, did it become easier for you to just, you know, I need this, like make a phone call and just kind of get stuff that way where you didn't really have to physically be there anymore? It, it started becoming that way once um, there was like a newfound respect for, it was it, it less of a respect for the hustle, more of a respect for the time spent. Okay. The, in, in the knowledge, the, you Absolutely. know, the being in the game for so long. Or yeah. The fact that I'm 42 years old. Right, 1985, right. I was on the playground, you know, with, we had the Pumas with the fat laces, of the course. Air Jordan, the Jordan 1 came out, you know, mm -hmm. the little, the Mexican homies were stunting. Right. I was going to school in Santa Monica, and these kids were busting from East Los. And they were just jumping off the fucking bus with the Jordan 1. I was like, what's up, fool? You don't need no fat laces? I was like, <laughs> y'all take some fat laces. I ain't got Not nothing to put them on, but what? <laughs> sup, you know? Sup with it. I mean, Jordans. <laughs> took the fat laces home to my dad said, yo, I need to get some shoes to put these on. He's like, come here. Let me tie the fucking around your neck. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> but, uh... Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, they started. They started looking at me, I guess, in a different light because I stopped reselling so much publicly. Right. Which was uh, that started, you know, I mean, when we got into the whole thing of no more lineups, mm -hmm. raffles. Yeah, yeah. Phone raffle. Right. Tickets, live raffles. When all that shit started happening, like low key, like we were getting a lot of blame for that. Of course. Because I stopped showing up. Bec exactly. And I, I started running these businesses downtown. Um, and I had some Indians, you, like you said, but my dudes was, they knew. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew they were out there for Wolf. Right. And that motherfucker would be like, if there was some crazy shit releasing at the Beverly Center and the fucking, the, the news rolled up and they're like, what are you guys in line for? Uh, I'm in line for Shoe Wolf. <laughs> and, uh, he, told us to, he told us to come out here and get the LeBrons. <laughs> I'm a, first, right. first 20 in the lineup. <laughs> Is there anyone here that's not here for Shoe Wolf? Yeah, can we speak to somebody that's not here for the Wolf, please? So, that, I mean, how do you feel about that thing? Because that changed your whole resale game, too, when they switched up, you know, the, the system for acquiring kicks and then it started going to more online raffles and online releases and stuff too. And That's when I stopped uh, focusing on making right. money off of sneakers. Okay. I s completely stopped focusing on, you know, that when all that shit happened. And there was a whole transition of, you know, I'm with Free Range. Um, I help run a- Yeah, know, tell us a little bit about that. I help run an amazing company that uh, my friend Jesse owns. It's called Free Range LA. Okay. Uh, we have the best fried chicken on the West Coast. Ooh, okay. Uh, we're recognized. You heard it here first, people? We're recognized, uh, you know, actually across the United States and worldwide. Like people know, when they come to vacation no in doubt. LA, it's, I've seen people pull up with their bags right off of Uber. Right. You yeah. know, they're not even speaking any English, and they're like, 
I want this. Like, damn, you, you that's know. Gotta, special. That's, gotta, yeah, that's, gotta, yeah. like, that's the little special. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Not so. going to in and out first. We're going to free range. We yeah. got to find the joint. I, I want to bring it back from the, so talking about the release shit, and, and we'll get back into, you know, more storytelling and whatnot, but speaking of the release shit, so this KD shit. KD. Right. Mm-hmm. KD. So. It sold out, right? Apparently, Apparently so, at this point, yeah. Right, so this, yeah. This, is, now. this is part of the the change in the dynamic of how sneakers are being released. And they keep trying and doing different things. And some of it's clever and cool, and some of it, you know. Yeah, before. Some I mean, of it ain't. I, I used to love it definitely it. puts a. I used to love when there was a tweet, come now. And you had to, exactly, and right away. Go, yep. Like, uh, Santa, when uh, Nike Santa Monica opened, mm-hmm. that's, that was like the age of when that was happening. Mm-hmm. Yep. Come now, you know, and uh, the KD. Uh, what was that 3M one? The KD, not the Nerf. There was another one before that. It was like a special one that, that they released, and they had tweeted like, "Come now, right? These 60 pairs, you know." And they were very mindful of the same person not getting back in line Moving and back whatnot, in, yeah. like actually getting 60 different people to get the shoe. You know, like those were that w- those were the fun days too. But now right. it's come to this. Yeah, I feel like now they're trying to get real gimmicky, and I appreciate it because it. It has changed. Like the sneaker game is not the same from the time I started collecting to even the time when I moved to Los Angeles. Because back to what you were saying, I would remember when Nike LA would tweet, and I had to run to you know the Beverly Hills Nike store and try and cop a pair of phones and like, yeah. oh, we don't, we only have a 15 left. Let me get them. Like you know whatever. But I definitely appreciate now how you know like Jordan Brand with the Don C's, they were doing like the scavenger hunt with. Uh, we well, even break this down though. Like what? what are you well, yeah, talk with about the KD10. So? so basically, what they were doing with the KD10 was. The, for KD's got a, a YouTube show called Still KD, and to basically kind of like overlap with the first game of the finals and him finally making it in, they were releasing 10 special edition pairs of the KD 10 Still KD, where it came with a special box and he signed the box and had a handwritten letter and like it really allowed for some more creativity. So the only time that the the shoe would be available on the Nike sneakers app is when KD's feet were actually on the court. So any half times, or excuse me, any timeouts, half time, whatever, it would no longer be available. But apparently it, it sold out mad quick. So I don't know how yeah. they were regulating that. Well, I like that it brings the game element back into it. Like when you used to watch right. Jordan play back in the day, you're like, holy shit, I can see him doing crazy stuff in these shoes. It brings yep. that like mystique to the actual product. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you the know KD, I mean? KD fans are probably like, they love that shit. Yeah. Of course. They're amazing. And I, I mean, I don't blame Nike for coming up with a gimmick like that these days, you know, with the, the way business is going exactly. for them uh, yeah, or no for joke. the sneaker world in general, mm-hmm. uh, especially for them. Um, <laughs> to, to, do something, <laughs> to do something like that is, is brilliant. Yeah, I for think, sure. I, I'm, not, I'm not mad at it, you know, it's, it's, right. that's, that's great. Yeah, I think they have to come up with these new fun ways to like get people back into it because Nike basketball is, in my opinion, just taking a dive over the course of the last few years because Nike basketball, like every like All Star game, you would be waiting for the pack. Uh, you know, NBA Finals and all that. They would always have these ill packs, but I think that's transitioned even more so now that they don't have those same athletes that are putting those shoes right. out. Because the signature shoes have changed now; they're more for on court play as opposed to lifestyle. And the yeah. lifestyle market becoming so prominent. It was exactly. definitely more lifestyle. One hundred percent. Yeah. Because you know. I mean, even going back to our days of initially meeting and, and connecting, like the uh, Kobe 6 All-Star Pack. There was oh. no way I was getting that in Kansas City. Hit up the wolf on Twitter, though. Like, yo, I'm PayPal ready. What's good? Like, you got me on these. And the, Chris- the Grinches, like, all those Christmas packs and all that. Like, that shit was so ill back in the day. And I feel like Nike, they've just taken a back seat because, li- like you said, lifestyle has become such a dominant, like, area within sneaker culture. And they're technology game is definitely up there as far as encore play goes but in their basketball category i don't really think they got it anymore like the pg ones i feel have been a good a bit yeah a very good things from a lot of them, different people know? about those yeah, right love those, love those. Yeah. and right. we know the Kyrie's are selling well and the Kyrie, yeah Kyrie and it i think they're doing a really good job with them with him and the the different ones that they're doing for him i remember when kd's not really gimmick but his whole thing was like i want to have shoes that are low price yeah, affordable. and affordable for you well, know that's right. the kids that's, that to be able thing. to get that was his whole thing like for the longest time I don't think he had a shoe under or over a hundred dollars no, right the like the kids yeah. were always ninety dollars ninety bucks right like yeah. yeah I was like woo flipping <laughs> 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 shoes back right then I was yeah. like wait yeah. like, you making like a good profit off of them joints ninety dollars shoes oh man <laughs> 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 I can just do it 
Man. Yeah, so, so on the release thing, the uh, another interesting, uh, you know, way that they've been, you know, trying to flip it and get creative was the the Don C shit. Right. So with that, they they created this the stash spots. That's which, what it was. I can't yeah. I forget if you called me about it or you called me about it, Daniel. But I think uh, I'm, I'm, I think I mentioned it. You might have. I know the known, I know the wolf yeah. had me on it too, but that was because I really wanted. The the rumors were, were flowing that the men's Arctic Orange were going to be available that day mm-hmm. in some way. That you heard form. from him for sure. Right. <laughs> right. I told you about the spot. He told you about f- what might have been. And there. there was a few people. There least, were people talking about that. There was, was a few people that said that. There to was me. like nine pairs out there or something like that. There people was a few had pairs. Them. They, were, they were for yeah. resale. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. They were on so, the market. So that happened, but so I got excited about that day because I've been on my my pink shit. You know, so Arctic orange my shit. Arctic yeah. orange shit. Uh, Nike with a fuck ass okay. name. Yeah, it's still pink. <laughs> so anyway, and, and I wanted to get a pair for my girl. So but the the day before the pop up was the stash spot on sneakers, which popped up and it had a little uh, like GPS icon. You click that and then it opens up three different stash spots, which is basically you click on that and it gives you a three sixty view of some area yeah, like in Los view. Angeles, mm-hmm. like yeah, Street, Google yeah. Street View. And if you can figure it out and get there, and it tells you how much stock is in there, if you can figure it out and you can get there in time, you can purchase. Now, I think... But you have to be there with your phone. You have to be there with like your verify, phone. Verify, with an account, yeah. all that And shit. then it becomes available for purchase. The whole thing with that is, too, and plus, if you were sitting there, like, if you got in early, you could have made, like, 20 different sneakers accounts no with different emails and just been banging the whole time because they did stop you at one, but you, if you opened up multiple sneaker accounts, you could just be right. hitting wow. right there, uh, which I know some people did. Or go I to the other it. stash spots. If they, once they sold out, if the other one was still available, go hit it. Mm-hmm. So I know some people that came up, like really came up. But that whole thing, like, do you think that that's them trying to be creative? Do you think it's them trying to stop the bot shit? Absolutely. Do you think it's like, yeah, what do you think? Bots fucking it's, change the game, it's man. All these, it's all these companies against the bot. Like, right. <laughs> The bots are fucking killing it. They're Supreme bots now. Like, Supreme bots are killing it. Yep. My shit's selling out in 13 seconds. And, <laughs> you know? And everybody's sitting in queue with, like, that weird <laughs> elevator music in the back of their head. Like, <laughs> I mean, you know, that, yeah. I I'm think... going to be late for work. This shit says just wait one more minute. Like, <laughs> do not refresh. Do not, yeah, do not refresh. Do not refresh. Just I definitely think the bots have made these companies have to get creative and really reach and try and find new ways to actually get the shoes to people that want them because anybody can get online find a bot purchase it and just expect the shoes to show up at their doorstep but not all of these people actually one appreciate the shoe and what it stands for and have that genuine connection to it it's just a fucking business. It's a business. <laughs> like they're paying the bot so that they can spend or they can make double or triple what they spent on the bot just by flipping the shoe. And I mean, I for somebody I've been collecting shoes since 2004, like when I was able to finally get my own money and start copping. That pains me just because I know all these kids nowadays don't have any backstory, don't have any history, but they can get every pair of Yeezys and flip them for $1200. You know what I mean? And that's right. like right. That and the kids who really want the sneaker for a good reason, they just, have they've, they've been no dis- choice but to pay that, or they just or can't get it. Just discouraged, right? right. It's discouraging, and right. they've kind of like given up. Yep. To a point to where like they don't even care, and they're like a little sour about it. Yep. You know, I mean, they don't even try to get it anymore because they've had a few bad experiences where they really wanted a sneaker that meant the world to them for some fucking reason or another. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's but some assholes on Instagram with 80 pair. Yep, I've fallen into that category you myself. Know, Been you mad. Look at, you, look at, you look at this kid like, motherfucker. Right. You know, I couldn't get. It's th- easy to hate though. I like couldn't I, get, I, I, I couldn't get one pair, but this kid's got 80 pairs. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, that shit's weak. I I know. Uh, speaking of the bots, I knew one of the first bot guys mm-hmm. that Nike actually was in contact with and tried to buy his bot off of him. No shit. So they could stop fucking up their game <laughs> when um. <laughs> you remember when uh, Nike Beverly Hills when they would tweet at uh, tweet yep. and go the DM yep. thing? Yep. Okay. I so, was a part of that. Yeah. So when he had that shit, he was like, I met him one day. He was like, he's like, uh, Mr. Shoe Wolf, and I was like, yeah, what's up? He was like, hey, give me your uh, your government name. We're gonna we're gonna get you some shoes. He's like, uh, you know, I, I run this bot. I'm not gonna give him any credit or say his name at yeah, all. Yeah, nah. But um, anyways, 
And I was like, all right, yeah, whatever. Here. He was like, all right, you know, we're going to sign up your, your Twitter account. I actually used my, you know, Shoe Wolf Twitter account. Mm -hmm. And uh, boom, every fucking shoe. This guy, this guy got me every fucking shoe, the most limited, like the LeBron packs and all right, that shit, yeah. you know, like, like three of them in Beverly Hills, like four of them in Santa Monica. He's like, go pick them up. Just take, take somebody to say you're this person to show them your, you know, all you got to do is show them your Instagram account and that you won. Wow. There's no IDs or the Twitter, oh. yeah, the Twitter DM, right? The Twitter DM. Yeah, that's, how, yeah. that's how you would get your shit. Yep. So you don't have to show him your ID because my ID doesn't fucking say Shoe Wolf. Right, exactly. So I'm going to show you my account that says you said that I won on here, Yo. you know? So this guy started taking 80 to 90 percent of their stock per release, per store Ugh. on the west side. <laughs> <laughs> and was just fucking, just fucking murking it business wise. Right. It was so amazing. And that was at that that and that was at that point where I was like kind of giving up on making mm -hmm. money off of reselling yep. large amounts of sneakers, and it was more of a get a rare sneaker in a special size for somebody and broker it out right, most at a higher rate. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and, you know, you do like do like ten of those a, a month. That's like you five good. racks. Yeah, you good. You know what I mean? Right. So I started just doing that and keeping it real low key, and maybe doing like ten. Work smarter, 10 not clients. harder. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's at that point, but that guy was killing it. Nike offered him fucking peanuts for his bot, and he was like, "Fuck you guys," <laughs> and started just killing them. Even and they harder. knew it was him, and, and they couldn't, couldn't do, do anything. It. So they stopped doing the releases that way, and he was one of the main <laughs> reasons they stopped doing that release. Damn. So it's funny, like that I've been around a lot of the cause of the change mm -hmm. of releases. The fact that I paid a kid, his, na his nickname was Tomato, this fucking kid we paid. He, <laughs> yeah. Shout out Tomato. Tomato. <laughs> Yo, shout out to Tomato. <laughs> Yo, he had so many pictures. Like, he was on the news so many times. He, he was so happy, you know? This kid who never went to school, he never, you know, he moved here from, like, South America. He would, like, help around one of the dispensaries I was managing. And mm. it was just some, some cool, you know, it was a cool, like, yes, he's a yes man, you know? Yeah. And we're like, yo, go line up at the fucking house of hoops and get 20 fools from your fucking hood. And he was like, oh, what are we going to give them? And I'd be like, whatever they fucking need, man. And I would pull up with food for 20 people, Damn. you know, on right. my way to work. And then after work, check on the fucking soldiers. Because, you know, they're taking names. They're no getting wristbands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it was serious. They would start out with 20. And then they would come to me on release day with 13 pairs. I'm like, what? What happened to the seven fucking guys? Right. They're like, they fell off, dog. I'm like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, like, what's up with you guys? <laughs> Y'all ain't built for this. Yeah, yeah, get it together. <laughs> get it together. It was like, it was kind of like uh, the the casino that that kid was running in boiler room, but he started, but he was at the, he was at the office, <laughs> and it kept the casinos just kept fucking up, and he was losing forty percent, fifty percent. He was like, oh, shut it down, <laughs> you know, shut the shit down, close it, close it up. So uh, that's how that whole thing went. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah. Getting back to, getting back to releases, but uh, the bots, bro. Right. And then that guy just gave up because there was nothing else to bot. What's he doing now? He's fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's in he's in TV and film. He's Naturally, at, so he's broke. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, he's done a few few projects that didn't come through. He actually uh, he had one that involved me and the perfect pair, and and then perfect pair's wife, and and uh, the little pair, their daughter, and yeah, it was this yeah. whole thing. We were shout out to them, man. We I know they just a had show. a pretty bad yeah. accident. Oh so, man, I, yeah. I'm real positive about them. I, yeah. I was uh, I was definitely saddened and uh, heavy hearted when I found out about it. Uh, right. I love that guy. Me and him are like fucking brotherly to uh to a certain extent i mean he, he lost his brother a few years ago mm -hmm. back you know what i mean yep. and uh i had when i had went through something with my brother recently um so you know there's a lot of uh there was a lot of connection between me and him but yeah everybody was a you know a little like damn it's yeah up. it was a heavy hit just to uh kind of see everything that went down and with them posting on their Instagram. Yeah, but I'm real like positive that. about it because they're, they're, they're getting, he got better quick. Yeah, that quick. I, I yeah. talked to her the other day and she said that she's getting the halo off soon and Dope. they're on the road to recovery, so. Dope. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It was, uh, you know, the family first for that guy. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and them and, uh, and it's cool. So anyways, that guy was, we we're trying to do some big TV show. Mm -hmm. Like we were pitching it to like, 
BH1 and right. A&E and all the, you know, you know, all the hype talk, you know. Yep. If I had brought John in, he would have taken me aside and be like, the reality of this project is. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, he just broke down, uh, he just broke down some project that I was told completely 20 different things about the other day. Uh, yeah. But there's some shit. There's yeah, some you were going to do a film. show on Vice. Yeah, they're like, they're, oh, shit. Next thing I, you Vice know. Vice <laughs> Land, Jerry Lorenzo, and I was like, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I've come through. Yeah. You know? I got the scoop on it. It was mm. just some, some, that, some that, billionaires from Korea trying to do some content shit. Yeah, uh, and then he, content breaks, content he breaks shit. it down to me, and he was like, <laughs> listen. <laughs> no, I wasn't shutting let it down. Me keep no, I'm, not, I'm not shutting it down. No, I'm you weren't shutting it down, but you gave, <laughs> me, you gave me the real. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. So if yeah. you, you need that, though. You if you had that. been around yeah. when this guy was talking about that TV show, no, no, no. That, maybe I mean, me and Kenny wouldn't have wasted so many steak dinners. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, absolutely, absolutely. Man, that's, the, that's fam though over there. Not the sure. Koreans. No, <laughs> not the billionaires. Not that there's anything right? wrong with Koreans. <laughs> not the Koreans. And I mean, shout out to once again the Perfect Pair. We, we got to get them out to one of the podcasts. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. 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 Perfect guy. Pair, if you're watching or if you're listening, please come through. Come yeah, fuck man. with the, the kickback. We need you here. Yeah, man. You and uh, the little pair and, and Mrs. Pair. We want all, <laughs> we want all the pair. <laughs> we want all the Shout out to all the pair. Well, it's funny, it's funny that the, the perfect pair is actually, it means him in Montana. Oh, okay. Because, right. because it was her Instagram before it was his. No shit. Really? Yeah, it was that was the perfect pair. It was an Instagram that she created for, for them, them, them as a collective. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, and one then day he posted some shoes. And that makes so much sense. Yeah, right. Holy shit. <laughs> Two stories crazy. about the handles tonight. I love it. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's that's enlightening. It's yeah. cool. a little personal that's history dope. about the uh, perfect pair, but yeah, man. that's what it really meant was them two. That's, that's awesome. what it still that means. Is awesome. it's, yeah, you can definitely see it. So when I say the perfect pair, I'm like, yeah. you know, how are you two? Because I'm not yeah. talking about him. He's yeah. not. Yeah. It, it, it intentionally was never about Sneakers. a sneaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then he posted a sneaker, and people were like, post some more shoes. Those are cool. <laughs> and then, boom. Next boom, thing you know. Boom, yeah. You know? Yeah. With the uh, the whole release thing, because I know, like, we know, we done touched on Nike. Like, Nike is yeah. in the bag. But Steph Curry actually just debuted the Curry 4 on foot in game one of the finals. And I don't think that Chef Curry's not got a good track record with the Under Armour <laughs> kicks if we're going to keep it 100. The Sports Center? <laughs> The sports center, the sports exactly. Center. With Under Armour sports, sports center, center logo. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the, the new joints actually look pretty good, and I think you know Under Armour has to. You know they lost a lot of money. They've been doing a lot of. <laughs> uh, you know we're not gonna talk about that. A lot of but soul searching. A lot of soul searching. Pun, pun intended. All puns intended. <laughs> I have one thousand percent on that. One. <laughs> what now, is it? what do you what do you think about the shit? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop yeah. it. What do you, uh, yeah, have you got a chance to look at them though and see like, the I didn't even know Curry 4, no. yeah. You haven't seen them yet? Uh, well, it's funny. Uh, Jack, can we bring them up? Yeah, let's get, let's see if we can get these on the, on the screen. Cause the only, time, the only time I hear about any <laughs> basketball show I heard anymore, a small struggle back when there. I see your videos and you're like, today's news. Yeah, shout out to Sneaker Headlines, you know, I'm glad we got, a, <laughs> yeah. we got an avid, avid viewer. You know, no, I gotta check out sneaker headlines. Put my, take my stock daily up a education bit. on what the hell is going on. <laughs> you know, in the sneaker world, you got to. Now the Curry Four is, uh, in my opinion, I think is one of the better looking Under Armour models to come out lately. Cause oh, it's an improvement. Yeah, like the kids fucking eat up Under Armour. Like you'll see all the kids in the Currys, and you know all the little Asian kids in the Philippines and whatnot. Like they love that shit. But as a which boggles my mind. It's insane. They just buy it because it's his. It's they have it's no yeah, sneaker Steph. taste whatsoever. They don't worry about I can the, walk like, in it and it has his name on it? It's Holy like, shit. Yep, Steph Curry. Let's this go. is the man. Like He's our Jordan, apparently. I don't I don't fucking know. Trinidad Are they shopping for the... Preaching about the Under Armour. The Rock joint. The Rock collab. <laughs> that was like... That they best the most... Co not, not because it was hot. <laughs> <laughs> just make that clear. <laughs> but because he said it was the most comfortable shoe that he had put on this year. Of, like 2017. of 2017. And, and period. That far. was the best selling shoe for Under Armour, right? Does if I'm wear, not mistaken. Does he wear Adidas? It instantly I mean, sold out. It. Yeah, it sold out yeah, right, right off the right right comfortable. Yeah. That comfortable. Wow. He said it was that comfortable. I, don't, I mean. And to like hooping, though. Like. I mean, if you're doing squats and deadlifts and fucking. All that kind of shit. You HGH, know you're shooting up. Then <laughs> maybe, I don't know, but. <laughs> workout. I, yeah, Shout I can't. Shout out to Q. Man, he I can't. Oh, where? Yeah, to lose that that's all he does is fucking follow that guy's uh, 
his Instagram videos. And uh -huh. Fucking deadlifting. Schoolboy on that leg fucking day, chest that day, prison man. workout. <laughs> oh, it looks, yeah, it looks amazing. Hell yeah, uh, schoolyard boy. School, schoolyard. schoolyard. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man, we got. Well, so what's the deal, Mr. Producer Jack? We we having some technical difficulties. Technician Frankie. Frankie, oh. the, Frank the technician. Frank the technician. Well, I thought we had all this queued up and ready to ride. Well, it's not locked up, so. Oh, apparently not. Yeah. <laughs> I feel very unlocked. I'm trying, trying to talk about these Curry 4s, and we can't even get proper can't imagery even, on the screen. Curry. Well, we come back to the Curry 4s. Yeah, I, we'll, I we'll, come, we'll come back to that. Re so, <laughs> we'll revisit. Yeah, we'll revisit the Curry 4s. We'll let that happen. Uh, you have some, some other accolades that kind of yeah. came from your, your sneaker, sneakerdom. Uh, oh, in regards I've, to so I've definitely uh, it's been a whirlwind. It's it was great for, like you said, for a while when it was when it stopped being the resale game yeah. and it started being more of a recognition of, of. They didn't want to admit they were recognizing the hustle. Right. So that's it. They had to mask it with like he's been in the game forever. Mm -hmm. You know he's look he's got all the threes. The threes are his favorite shoe, and you know people knew so much about me that wasn't anything remotely true or, you know, right. fact at all. Of course. People, you know, people think they know everything. Just word of you. mouth and then, well, yeah. from social media. Yeah. Right. Well, for the listeners, what I'm trying to do with what I'm saying here is I'm trying to pull out of you to talk about <laughs> November rule. No, I was, get, I, was, I was getting to that. All right, right. all right. Hey. This is me forcibly trying to set up a response. Hey, asshole. Hey, look here, I asshole. Get to the, I get to the thing, you know, every now and then. <laughs> no, but I was saying, uh, that's what I was saying when I had more recognition in the game, like yeah. a lot of cool things came from it, like the November rule thing. Um, you want me to get into Yeah, break it down for anybody who's listening to, you know. Problems. One day I was at lunch and I'm with my ex-girlfriend and she's telling me how I don't do shit. And that <laughs> standard, <laughs> standard, in there, standard, yeah. You know, I know that conversation. <laughs> right, so we're having lunch, like you ain't shit, phone rings. P production company. They're in Florida at the moment. Is it Shoe Wolf? I was like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Where'd you get my number from? Like, who, who are you? Who are you? You calling my phone asking and, who uh, I am. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, man, I don't want to fuck this up. Is the Kixify guy down in Florida? I don't think yeah. so. Wait, was it? Oh, no, wait, wait. Kick Square. Kick Square. Okay. Anyway, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent on that one. At mm -hmm. Kick Square, some shit like that. I guess somehow he was connected to the project, tied up to the project, and had to like forfeit because he couldn't handle it. He was like, they're, what, they're, what they wanted was like, once he saw the script, he was like, yo, what the, f what the fuck am I gonna get undefeated for? And, right. Mm -hmm. And this and this and that, you know, you know. And the guy was like, I can't help you guys. Call the Shoe Wolf. Damn. And somehow this lady had my number. I don't know if he had it or they went through, you know, several channels to get it. But my phone rings, at, you know, my lunch, you ain't shit lunch. <laughs> and uh, the phone rings and, it, you know, I was like, yeah, sure. They're like, are you available for the next uh, three to six months? Shit. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> what kind of money are we talking about? What's the, what's the work? Right. She was just like, well, I hear you're the sneaker guy. And I was like, that's me. <laughs> and they Speaking, said, you know, the, the, they said, "Can you help us out?" And I said, "What do you need?" They said, "We're producing a movie. It's based around sneakers. It's a, you know, comedy, love, romantic comedy, you know, rom com. I think what they call it. Yeah, rom com. Anyways, uh, it was one of those joints. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, Mo McCray, DJ, DJ Walls, uh, Lala, Tatiana mm -hmm. Ali, Faze yeah, on Love. Yeah, it was love. a stacked cast mm -hmm. on the that one. The cast was crazy. Yeah. I pulled up to the set first day. All these motherfuckers are waiting for me. I mean, the whole set is crickets. And I get there, you know, with a shit ton of sneakers. And I walk in, and I'm walking through the set. And I was like, hey, how you, how you doing? I'm Wolf. And I have never seen a group of people happier to see me. <laughs> <laughs> like, this, uh, this shit was about to fucking fail. Like, they had all the shit set up, and this guy, like, let them down, I guess, in the end. You know, and they uh, they had a script specific list of sneakers. You know, like the red carpet. We need the, the undefeated the, the fours. Mm -hmm. the undefeated fours, and 
that's what you know the the whole thing was based around the, the movie was four, depending on the yeah you know and him wearing he's like i'm gonna wear them yeah so they're like no you're not gonna he's like i'm gonna do it so <laughs> <laughs> they should have just cast you at that yeah, time, right <laughs> at that time of uh you know that conversation uh, the conversation ended like well you're hired yeah you're going to uh you know you're gonna help us you know co-produce and and you know and be on set and uh and help us with this movie and it was great what's this guy's hand about <laughs> what you, what's he trying to say 12 minutes yeah 12 minutes we got 12 we minutes 12 minutes for what god mm -hmm. damn Ooh. Well, we well we got tapes wrap it in 12 minutes so we, got you know, we'll, we got tapes we got tapes we're, we're, we're recording on betamax y'all yeah. <laughs> all right so question i have a question about the uh hand gestures no i have a question <laughs> about <laughs> Uh, so were those dead stock, the undefeated fours, uh, or they, were they worn? Oh, like, what it? was the deal? Like, so some shit, did they rented? What, how does it, was it a fee? Did they buy anything? Well, they had to insure, um, all the sneakers I bought for a million dollars. I had a million dollar policy on the sneakers, if anything happened. Standard. Um, <laughs> standard. And, uh, at that time, uh, I will admit that I didn't own the undefeated fours anymore at that point. Uh, you know, the, the, the lunch, like, you ain't shit. Like I was in the middle of like a little bit of a lull, so I started selling off my big pieces, mm -hmm. you know, to stack back up, you mm -hmm. know. And yep. I, I sold like nine pairs of shoes and had like thirty thousand dollars. So it's like could be know, worse. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it, it could be a lot worse. worse. Things worse. could have been a, yeah. lot, be a lot worse. So uh, I sold my whole Jordan collection for less than that. So so yeah, <laughs> it they, could be uh, worse. <laughs> <laughs> so that br that brings the perfect pair back in. I reached out to him. Uh, I needed the undefeated fours. He said, no problem. I need an insurance policy on these things. He got his own insurance policy real quick. Dope. And he shot out a couple pairs of shoes, and he actually let the guy wear them in the movie. That's what I'm saying, though. So did they go from Damn. dead stock to lightly worn, or were they already lightly worn? Uh... Cause there's got to be an extra I fee for, for undies. Oh, yeah. yeah. The fucking yeah. No, holy Ken, grail, you know not, what I mean? No, not at all. Kenny, um, it, that's... That's what's, I mean, that's what started, you know, and continued in the middle of and will always be the part of the man he is. Like, he didn't want anything, you know. Like, he was doing it all uh, out the didn't love. He yeah. didn't need his name in the credits. He didn't fucking need a, a fee. He was helping me out. Wow. Mm -hmm. and that's the, real shit. And I told the guy, I was like, yo, they're going to put your shoes on right now for the scene. He was like, word. He's like, hey, you guys have a good time? Wow. Damn. You know. That's and love. Boom, <laughs> the guy, yeah. <laughs> Bow. <laughs> <laughs> and he, you know, and he puts on the undefeated fours and he, you know, That's carefully, sick. very lightly. Yeah. I took, you know, I took three steps in him and I would literally get on my fucking knees and lift his leg and take the shoe off. Yeah. And put another shoe on. Man. Well, we got some producer notes. <laughs> what are we working with? We have to wrap in 10 minutes, or we can't go up tomorrow, or we will have to no time to edit. OK. So let's do 10 minutes of wrapping. 10 minutes of wrap-up. Right. Perfect. <laughs> um, just to hit on a couple more topics then. We just got win. Well, not just got win. It was a we, few days this ago. Just in. <laughs> this just in. This just in. How we feel about Kendall? 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 Kendall Jenner. Kendall Jenner just signed with Adidas. I saw that. Welcome it's, to the family. This, uh, that's what I'm saying. Remember like, it's a whole right? fucking Kardashian brand now at this point. What um, What are your thoughts on like influencers and celebrities outside of athletics getting these shoe deals now, and and even outside of the rappers? Because that I feel like that train has kind of like died down even more so. That that train definitely has died yeah. down. Yeah, one thousand percent. I mean, that Kanye excluded. It, right. Businesses. Right. Uh, uh, it, it all comes back to business is business. Yep. Um, they're doing it to just to, you know move some units, sell some numbers, Absolutely. and grab another part of uh, a, you know a growing audience. Yeah, that's that's out there for you them. Can't knock the to, hustle for them. To yeah. consume. So it's yeah. it, I never like even if I don't like something that they are doing mm -hmm. or, or or something that it's but I recognize that it's all about business yeah. and it's in the best interest for their business. Wex so know what he's doing. doing. Wex, so, he, ain't, he ain't stupid. Yeah, you know exactly what he does. Does anybody know the details? Like, does she is she getting a shoe? Nothing is really, yeah, I think she's just like an ambassador. Yeah, she, you she, know what I mean. She's like, I'm gonna wear three stripes. Give me a couple mil. 
basically. Right? Yeah. You know? I assume yeah. so. Yeah. Or or listen, somebody hit them up like, listen, we're rocking this shit every day. We need a check. Right. Mm-hmm. Signer. They run DMC yeah. there. They run. Whoa. <laughs> uh, basically. Uh, basically. Oh, damn. Basically. Damn. Um, <laughs> They run DMC. <laughs> but, but it's not going to be like DMC's Puma birthday. and Rihanna and shit like that. I don't think she's well, going to get like... I don't know. We don't know yet because Kylie... That'd be interesting. Kylie, Kylie got a Puma much. shoe, but hers was just a, another shoe that they basically took and... Oh, it yeah. It was a... Twisted it a little Super bit. Super flippy, yeah. Like, it was a, yeah, it was a poor man's <laughs> Fenty, basically. Like, a poor man's yeah, Fenty. Yeah, I wasn't going to say it, but I'm going to say it, you know. But uh, my whole thought on the whole thing is, good for business. Booming. Uh, bad for society-ish for the kids. Think so? Well, bad for culture. Bad for the cult. What, and fucking what is the culture? But that's what I'm saying. Shoe game fucked up. It's like saying shoe <laughs> game. Like people, Corgi used to ask me, listen, do people that fucking buy Pez consider themselves to be in the Pez game? <laughs> and that's what Corgi should me one day when I made my shoe game fucked up shirt. <laughs> it is what it is. But the culture, it's just, I think, why does there need to be so much influence of that type of influence for these kids like why can't they rock what they want because these type of influencers make things popular and make things exclusive and make and so at some point kids get left out i agree you know it also doesn't mean extent. it makes it great in any way either right no. it might make it popular as fuck but it doesn't make it's, it great it's definitely not great yeah, yeah hype does not equal great but nah, that's why i'm here level that. i mean we the the game has changed point blank period whatever yeah. it, it comes down to Things are not the same. It's moving in a different direction, and you either get with it or you get lost. That, I mean, because yeah. the, these influencers are the new celebrities, so to speak. You know what I yeah. mean? So yeah. it comes down to shoe What's game it? fucked up. Yeah. Kendall Jiller. Ken- Kendall Jiller. Kendall Jiller. <laughs> Kendall Jenner <laughs> is taking home the bag, and Adidas is. And kudos to her. You yeah. know, go go get some. But kudos to the mom. Know. The mom. Probably. Kudos to mom. Yo. What's, her, what's her name? The Chris, Chris Jenner. Yo, Chris shout Jenner, out to Chris Jenner. She <laughs> know she know how to run and get a bag. That is she oh, has yeah. several bags. Man, many, many bags. I'm many trying bags. to end up in that sunken city, like for real. <laughs> yes. Yo, but Shu Wolf, we appreciate you yeah, stopping man. by, man. Kicking back with your yeah. boys. As yes, always, on camera or off camera, he got you got stories for days and yeah. even backstories on stuff that we didn't know. So we definitely appreciate your time and, definitely. and hopefully you. we'll Thank have you. you back if you know you come oh. come fuck with us again. We got yeah, you guys are on my way home. Perfect. <laughs> <You> got <laughs> some more time. That's Perfect. What I like to hear. Yeah, Perfect. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Really pretty easy to stop by. Yeah, yeah. Dope. Yeah. Well, that's the episode number one of the kickback. This is a wrap. We will be here every Friday with more information for you guys. The homies sitting back, talking shit, talking kicks, yeah. doing what we do best. Hell yeah. Peace. Peace. Outro. Dope. I want to be like, oh, so weren't you going to oh, tell shit, us? Oh, shit, look what's up on the screen. That's been up. <laughs> I was going to be like, yo, did you want to tell us about that exclusive shit that no one knew about? Oh, shit, we're out of time, guys. I'll catch you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Dope. All right, cool. They're still the sports centers. <laughs> They're just the more sock like sports. They look teams. like KDs, like the, the tall KDs and the Curry Threes, basically. Like that's It looks really like a. The upper looks like a Converse All Star made out of Bounty. <laughs> or, or, or Brawny. You know what I mean? God damn. It looks like terrible. Look who pick her up or? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Got a mess? <laughs> Grab a pair of Under Armour to Steph Curry. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're yeah. not the worst ones we've seen. No, like, the uh, the midsoles look pretty comfortable. I mean, Under Armour's always gonna have them chunky ass midsoles, regardless. But you don't chunky. have to. I mean, I feel like they designers <laughs> don't know how to make nothing yeah. other than that. They have limited tech. Uh-huh. There's a guy with a chunky sole design in his head. Like, this is what we do. <laughs> <laughs> we are about chunk. Yeah. I was talking to somebody from over there recently, um, not from within, but a exterior agency associated mm-hmm. with them and how they have a big lifestyle push coming. And I'm just really interested to see what, what that we looks like. We saw them do that last year. They put out a lifestyle series. No, yeah, but like, not, not even just a series, but like, set them shoes on fire. but literally <laughs> about to take, take what they're making and really, really push mm-hmm. the lifestyle thing. Like, I feel, hard, full fledged. I just don't understand. You know, it's not going to... Fucking armor, uh, Under Armour logo on your lifestyle shoe. Like, no, thank right? you. Yeah, and this they don't guy, mix. And since some guy walks by with his biceps popping out of his Under Armour thing, <laughs> you're like, no. 
What is this, a Affliction t-shirt? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> affliction, bro. Taking it back. <laughs>